Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart, an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins actually found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S.-made formula to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We even conducted the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in a quarter century with clinically proven benefits like easier digestion, less spit-up, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. And we make our own formula in the USA and our very own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks podcast collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your Spider-Pan, Jeremy. Hey, yo. yo hey. We're back. <laughs> we are back, and I'm back with the Lost Boy, Philip. Hey, hey. Because last week I had to fly solo into the Batcave, do a little bad history. Hope you all enjoyed it. But this week, this week's going to be a little odd, because sometimes you're going to hear Philip, sometimes you're not. But <laughs> I got some fun stuff to do with, with Philip here, you know, but there's a reason why I came in with, hey, yo. <laughs> you know right. why, right? That's exactly right. For good old Scott Hall, who passed away this past Monday, as as, as the time of this recording. That's right. Uh, known as Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon. Which is my first introduction to Razor Ramon, I must say, was actually the, I guess it was on the PlayStation. They had, because they had the WrestleMania arcade game where they'd done the Mortal Kombat style, where they had done some actual captures of the wrestlers. Uh, and the combat was done, you know, very weird style. But if you picked Razor Ramon, he'd say, you picked the right guy, Chico. <laughs> and I'm surprised he didn't get in trouble for that, his fake Hispanic accent that he came in. Like like he was trying to come on sounding like Scarface or something, you know. Yeah, that was his style. That was his thing. He was, you know, because there may be bad days. Bad guys never die. That's right. <laughs> something like that. Bad guys are forever. Yeah, bad days come and go, but bad guys are forever, because he was always the bad guy. That's right. And I don't know how much he kept that over when he went over to WCW and then was a founding member of the NWO with, with Kevin Nash, which is funny when I was looking at some video this week and seeing him having matches versus Shawn Michaels and versus Diesel. Yeah. When Shawn Michaels and Diesel, you know, like Diesel was like Shawn Michaels' protection or whatever, or his insurance. Uh, they were the heels, and Razor Ramon was the the face, and they were facing off. It was like all the battles he was having with Kevin Nash, and then, he, of course, they formed the Outsiders team over in WCW and eventually reveal Hulk Hogan as the third member of the NWO with the greatest heel turn ever. Yeah, it was. So. And Ke- Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, especially Scott Hall in this case, uh, they went over to WCW, and it was a surprise, huge surprise. Yeah. Because they were still signed on technically signed <laughs> on to WWF at the time. Yeah, and they had that big finish match where they all just kind of broke the kayfabe. Yeah, absolutely. It was yeah, a, it yeah, was a yeah. big deal. <laughs> yeah, right now, I'm, pardon me, I'm adjusting your microphone because I turned it up a little louder, but then I realized I could hear me even more in your mic. So. Well, that's, that's fine. Yeah, we, we've got his microphone positioned, and not by hand like we normally have. We're actually using microphone stands, although we're actually, instead of my home studio, we're here in the, uh, I don't know what you would call this, the... Uh, Fortress of Solitude. Fortress of Solitude slash 
fat man cave. We'll yeah, call it. which is <laughs> kind of where we record most of these shows when you're here and when yeah. on the show. As I bring, I have to carry a lot of equipment over, but I do not have my laptop. So uh, when you hear stuff like the trailer park and stuff like that, you're probably just going to hear me by myself. Uh, but we can do a movie review, but uh, we'll do a movie review later because. Um, we want to talk a little, of course, some Scott Hall and some tribute. And you got to meet Scott Hall. I did. I met him not quite a year ago. It'll be a year in April. Well, that was at the thing, WrestleMania. You WrestleMania. got to go to WrestleMania mm-hmm. last year. I went to what they call WrestleCon. Yeah. And uh, here's what was really cool. I, I spoke about it last year, but where I stayed at that uh, hotel, that's where a lot of the wrestlers were staying. Mm. And so I look over as I'm going up to the room, and I look, and there's Kevin Nash walking next to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, because I, I was like, I know this guy, you know. Course, first of all, I'm Kevin six, the Nash. I'm yeah, I'm six four, <laughs> and so when you see people taller than me, that's kind of rare where I'm at. <laughs> and uh, but I look over and I was like, oh my gosh, I know that guy. And of course, you know he's used to it. But yeah, uh, then there's a few others that I recognize. Like I think I know him and my my friend who I was with, uh, our friend Jamie, uh, James, James. Yeah, I call him Jamie. <laughs> anyway, he he goes, you know who that was, don't you? He goes, he's that guy from. Uh, a TNA wrestling, and I said, like, "Oh, that is him." I thought he looked. I thought it was Which like guy? I can't think it? of his name. Um, oh, uh, you used to like him. He would do impersonations of Macho Man. Oh, Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal. Jay yeah. Lethal was pretty awesome. Yeah, back he in was. The day, man. Yeah, he was there, and we were. T- so James was talking to him in the line, and and he goes, "That's Jay Lethal." I said, "That's Jay Lethal." Yeah. I did, but you know, the truth be told, I'm so used to like Comic Cons and all, where people are trying to dress like them or whatever. Yeah. But you know, so I didn't realize it was really him. But then after that, there was a whole bunch of people I started recognizing. I run into uh, J- Jim Duggan. Nice. I've gotten to talk to him. We had an interview about, I can't tell you what episode number is off the top of my head, but I did interview him in a previous episode. Yeah. And I look over, there's a whole bunch of them. I, He's I went, so much fun. I started going out and meeting them all, you know, Million Dollar Man. And uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, he was, I, I think I had the most fun with him and Sergeant Slaughter. I went and met Hulk Hogan, of oh, course. Sar- Speaking of which, Sergeant Slaughter will be at Planet Comic Con this year. I'd like year. to go see him. I yeah. wish I was going to be able to go this year, but I am not going to make it. He's so much fun. That'd he's, be cool. He's a great guy. I, I, even if I was having the money to go, I wouldn't have money to also get autographs with people. But sure. Uh, the, the list they've been releasing here in Kansas City, Planet Comic Con. I mean, Adam Savage now yeah. uh, has been announced. And oh, just, I love it. Yeah. Actually, great. Eckstein's coming now, and my goodness. But Kevin Nash was, a, was a great to meet, but the one I, I probably enjoyed the most. Oh, someone's. Oh, I, I think that's picking up. Probably, I yeah. hear it. <laughs> uh, ignore that noise in the background, folks. It's a vacuum upstairs. Yeah, I think I think that's a uh, a time traveling situation. Right, <laughs> that's what We're it going is. back a year ago where that's, you met Ted DiBiase. That's and, exactly right. I feel like I keep interrupting you. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So I met a bunch of people, and one of them that I got to meet that I really really enjoyed, besides uh, Kevin Nash and a few others, I got to meet Scott Hall. Now, he had to wear his mask because he had been going through some illnesses. Yeah, he had a rough time in the last few years. He sure did. Uh, but with that, I got to sit and meet him and got my picture with him. And, and I'm going to give you a copy of that so you can put that yep, up there. It will be on the album cover this, yeah. the, if you take a look there but for this episode. I, I was so thrilled to get to meet him. And uh, he was so, so kind. And you know what's funny is when you, you're you always seeing a guy for years and you, they call himself the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then to hear him being very, very kind and nice and yeah. well, to be truthful about it. And fo- folks, you probably know this. I'm a pastor. But um, I spoke to him about how I prayed for him a lot yeah. and have been praying for him. And, uh, and he said, thank you. God bless. And so as we were talking a little bit, he spoke about Jesus with me. Oh, and cool. uh, he come to to be a Christian uh, just a couple years back because he had gone through so much health problems. And yeah. most of you probably know, but... Uh, uh, Dustin, Serious substance abuse problems for a long oh, time, too. Yeah, and him and, and uh, Jake the Snake Roberts yeah. got help from... Was it Dustin Diamond? Uh, no, DDP, Diamond DDP, Dallas Diamond Page. Dallas with, Page. Uh, with uh, what did he call his yoga? DDP yoga? Something Basically, like that. Yeah, he came up with his own manly yoga. And he helped him. And when, th- when that happened, and he went through a lot of health problems, uh, different people he knew, Hogan and others... We're praying with him, and he come to to be a Christian and to uh, be saved. So that's a, that's awesome. So we talked just a little bit about that, but he Great. was really really kind. In fact, he had just received his second ring for the Hall of Fame. Oh, and so in that picture, you'll see that he's got two rings on his hand. Nice. Yeah, because yeah, he got in once for being Razor Ramon, and then another time for what the NWO. NWO. And in fact, I say he just got it. They just had the the yeah Hall the of ceremony fame. would have been just that night, but they were supposed to do it the year before. Uh, but the whole, you know, shebang with uh, yeah, COVID. COVID and all that, <laughs> that had, had held it off the a COVID year. COVID conundrum. Yeah, it held it off a year. So praise the Lord that uh, 
that all this happened in the sense that uh, we know where he's at. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. But it was great to meet him. That's awesome. And I've heard a lot, a lot of people saying a lot of nice things, you know, yeah. and uh, I, it was so great that he did get cleaned up and got turned things around. I've, yes, I've seen videos where he talked about he had had, uh, he, had, he landed himself in the hospital and that's actually part of how he kept drink, quit drinking because he couldn't do it on his own, but he had a serious health scare with his lungs yes. and instead of he, he had to quit. Uh, and that, that really helped him know that he needed to get health. But uh, unfortunately, with a lot of the health problems that he's had, uh, he had a hip injury. Yes. He had some surgery. Then, unfortunately, some blood clots got in there. And ha- he had, like, I think three heart attacks. Three, yeah, heart attacks. Stro- yeah, heart attacks. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, finally, he, he just passed away on Monday after a long career over to, with both WWF because it was F at the time, and WCW, and WO, mm-hmm. yeah. even coming back to WWE, WWE. Yeah. Uh, with the merger and everything, and just had a long storied career, a lot of video game appearances. One of the things that always comes back to me, this is going to sound so cruel to say, but I can't help it. Every time I think of uh, Sid, uh, Sid Vin- Vicious. Vicious, I can't help but think of, <laughs> of him, Scott, when they were mocking him, and uh, he comes out there because they were dressed up like him, you remember? And uh, he comes out. Vaguely. there. I didn't watch a lot of WCW, oh. man. I was on. I was watching Raw as War with Josh at the time during the Monday Night Wars. What was funny was Sid comes out there, and I can't remember which one was dressed like him. I want to say it was a. Uh, it was Kevin Nash that was dressed like him. They had this wig on and this makeup and everything. And maybe it was Scott that was behind him, but they're mocking him and all. And poor Sid, oh, man. poor Sid comes out there to make fun of him and, and to put him down. And when he does that, he gets all mixed up and mixed up in his words. And he says, uh, uh, let's see, what was the wording he said? Uh, I, so, can't, I think I've seen this clip where he accidentally calls himself stupid. And yeah, something. he does. He says, uh, <laughs> Is I'm twice the, twice as dumb as you are. Or something I'm like twice that. as dumb as you look. Or yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> twice the man as you. Twice as dumb as you. Or something yeah. like that. It was just. It was so funny. And they 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 couldn't help. But they broke character and started laughing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and Sid's probably like because he was good at playing as a bad guy. You know those guys who make really good bad guys are probably some of the nicest people. When He's you nice, meet in real life. but just not the brightest bulb, yeah. you know. But, but nice I, guy. I remember first time I saw him it was like I remember watching a WrestleMania later it was him and Hulk Hogan. Yeah, WrestleMania uh, when he was I think he was Sid Justice over at WWF at the time. I want to say seven or eight. I think it was the same year that uh, Ric Flair had Macho had said man. he had fo- and, and you know photos when he beat Macho Man. Mm-hmm. He had photos of Elizabeth. He was going to release. I think. Yeah. Was that, that was same year. I think it was eight, and that was the big mistake in the sense that that was the one where I say mistake that Vince could have had the greatest match, Hogan and Flair, and he mm. did not go for mm. it. Oh, that would have been great. Had, had instead, well, Ric Flair and Macho Man, though, they could tear up a oh, ring they between did. the two of them. So, but the yeah. two biggest names. Yeah. Oh. But he went with some quality wrestlers, so that was a you know, good yeah. match. Plus, that was a good angle because I, I was still young enough to where I kind of bought it that I was like, oh, no, he's going to release photos of Elizabeth that we shouldn't see because <laughs> she had an affair with Ric Flair. Oh, no. And I was all, like, sunk in on it, you know. It was still real to me, dang it. I you never know? I never bought into it, but I always yeah. enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, for a while, I, I just wanted it to be real because I needed something real with it. And, you know, and <laughs> But it, that's the thing. Is you, I, you, you wanted to go in with the stories, but then you watch the matches and you're like why do they stomp every time they punch <laughs> like they're making the sounds <laughs> you know yeah. you, you start looking at things like yeah if somebody hit you in the face that many times you would break your jaw <laughs> you know? i always enjoyed it though my dad i think was when i was real young he would always tell me now now remember son this is just for fun yeah because he would i guess he was afraid i was going to go to school and, and, and try, try to sleep like somebody yeah, <laughs> yeah. well he, he always knows a big guy yeah oh yeah you could have so, uh, but as we normally do when we do our host chatter, because we are dedicating this, of course, this episode to Scott Hall, which is why we dove in there. But we got more fun coming, and I want to get into it because it's a surprise. So first, we'll talk about what I've been watching. And now here's 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 the funny thing that I okay. Other than I have watched a couple movies, which I'm going to get to at least one of them with you later, and then by myself, you'll hear me talk about another movie, Turning Red, that I watched at least myself, and then we both got to watch the Adult Project. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll discuss that one later. Uh, but I. I've got to confess something. I, I, you ever get into YouTube and you just fall into a rabbit hole of watching something? Oh, I've done it many times. Well, uh, basically, uh, for those of you who are, I, uh, I don't know that I've mentioned this again, but Diz Radio is back with good old Jonathan Johnson. 
Uh, and I do a segment on there. It was a Disney history segment, but now I've been doing like Disney shorts. I've been thinking I should I should call it in Disney shorts you know, to be a little <laughs> funny. But I was like, no, I want to keep it funny, you know, clean or whatever. Uh, but I've been covering like Disney shorts, Silly Symphonies, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck cartoons, whatever. The old classic. I've been covering those one per episode. You try to theme it around whatever Jonathan's got going on. Uh, if you go, it's when you look it up, it's like uh, Disney Blue, uh, Disney, because he used to have a website where he was doing like Blu rays and it's like, but it's like Disney Blues, Diz Radio. Uh, he does a really, it, it's basically guest focused. So he gets a lot of fun guests on there. He's even talked to Martin Cove on there, which oh, I yeah. know you want to meet Martin I love Cove. Martin Cove. Uh, you might want to check out that episode. But yeah, I do a segment on there. It's, it's kind of a magazine. There's a, Magazine, radio show style. Uh, he actually is with a group of people paying for license so he can play music in his show. And he's got a vast collection of music. It's pretty wild. Uh, I've actually learned some people uh, through listening to his show. But yeah, I am back on that show. So y'all go check out and you can listen to me and all the other rest of the team. There's a great a great group of people that we all make this show. Uh, and Jonathan does a really good show hosting. And he's a super nice guy. I've gotten to talk to him, of course, regularly. He's been a guest on our show a couple times. And I can't remember what I've talked to him. I think we've talked some horror stuff because he used to have a horror podcast. But oh, cool. I do want to mention, okay, there was a reason why I got into mentioning the Diz Radio thing. Oh, yeah. So, because of that, uh, and he started a, a Facebook chat where the, the D team, as he calls us, because uh, it's the D team and we have a bunch of D heads for listeners. That's what we call them. <laughs> I know it sounds off, but they're the D some, heads. Disney heads, okay? Come on, get your mind out of there. Gr- you're giving us a great uh, visual. Yeah. Not that kind. Disney heads. Uh, so... But he, somebody had posted up because uh, you know we were discussing different cartoons or whatever in our little Facebook group or whatever, and there was some uh, cartoon. Oh, it was a uh, a pig's a pig, which is an old Disney cartoon where yes. this guy who follows the rules in his train station and he gets a guinea pigs and he's like, well, a pig's a pig, and there's like a four cents difference in the price of a pet versus a pig for the guy that comes to pick him up, and it's a really funny short. But I was watching that and I noticed on the side is a suggested thing. You remember when Grover worked at Charlie's Restaurant and as, as a waiter? Yes, I loved it. And I saw one of those, and I've been watching as many as I could. <laughs> I've been all over on the Sesame Street's official thing, watching Grover. And every, every time he tormented this Grover. guy in a restaurant, uh, in a in a shop where he was framing a picture. Uh, in fast food restaurants, yes, uh, yes. as a flight attendant, he's yes. just tortured. Of course, the guy's kind of a jerk. He's almost, yes. a, I would say, a Karen because he's complaining about everything. Sometimes he's got a point to complain. Sometimes he's just being a jerk like the alphabet now, soup one. What's, what color was that guy? He was a little blue guy. Blue. I couldn't remember if he was green or blue. Yeah, he's blue with a pink nose. And, yes, it, it, and Grover makes jokes on that. But uh, So I've been watching all of those old classic segments and even trying to find some old classic Super Did he have a mustache? Yeah, he had a little, little kind of so. orange to brown yeah. mustache with little, you know, bald hair bald and hair, hair yeah. coming out. So, but that's what I've been watching this week. But uh, the big story, granted, I've been playing actually some other stuff at home. I, I went through and played the Final Fantasy VII remake again because, golly, I love that game. Uh, but you've been playing, and I've mm-hmm. gotten to play a little bit with you. Yeah, and I'm going to hit the sound for it now. Although I guess there's no sounds coming off of it here. And we have, well, yeah, you've shut off the entrances. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so recently the WWE 2K22 game has come out. Mm-hmm. All new control. I got to remember that all the controls are different here yeah, because I only got, I played the tutorial and we had some matches. Uh, but he has created me in here. Yes, I We're have. going to do kind of a live playing and review. And you can hear it. And I hope I volume this right so we hear just enough. I guess I, oh. Uh, okay, well, there's there's that Batman somebody made. Uh, the funny thing is, there's going to be commentary on this, but we're going to be talking as well and review. <laughs> Though what's fun about this, I got to tell you what's on screen right now is Philip Accor has made himself. This game will allow you to get a photo of yourself, like full body photo. Yes, you know you have to il- uh, eliminate the stuff around it, like erase oh, so stuff. like a, get a ping or whatever yeah, and make and, it transparent. And I can do that, yeah. So you could use whatever background. Like right now, there's flames in the background, yeah. but you can get a picture though of yourself. To be, you know, in the game yeah, that way. Because you know how they have real pictures of, let's say, I'll used to use a name, let's say CM Punk or whoever, or not, no, he's not in this, but John Cena, we'll say, because Jeremy loves John Cena. Ugh, no, so, no. Uh, <laughs> by the way, even though you're not going to see it, Jeremy, your intro, of course, at this moment is the, the music wise is John Cena. Uh, uh, but <laughs> uh, And he knows that I, there's, I used to respect John Cena. He, I've lost all respect for John Cena. He still does things for kids, but not like... Uh, but yeah, he's been a, a whole shill for uh, the human rights violating communist China. I know. Kissing up for money. 
I and when know. he released uh, put that video, I was like, you know, I just lost respect I for know, you. I know. Oh, somebody made a custom Hulk Hogan yeah, they, with the other one. Yeah, I didn't want to get into serious topics, uh, but yeah, yeah. But <laughs> you, you, you like your photo? Uh, he's, he's put my head on the uh, the spectacular Spider Man body <laughs> from the cartoon Spectacular Spider Man. Yeah. Which, by the way, we've uh, in a past episode we did talk to uh, Greg Weiss. Oh, cool. I believe, yeah, who was one of the creators behind Gargoyles, but also was big behind oh, Spectacular just... Spider Man. Also the uh, the first Nickelodeon Ninja Turtles series. By the way, go check that episode out. I thought you would like that. <laughs> I'm going to grab. I guess. Oh, I don't get to see what the attires look like. Okay, so attire one is where you've got a spider pan thing going mm-hmm, on for me. Yeah. Attire two, you put me in the cool where I'm every Ninja Turtle all at once. Yeah. I will try this other one. Oh, you don't have Heather on here to be my manager. Not I guess, yet, have you? No. I will. But. Alrighty. So I'm. I, I got to be careful. I'm playing with my avatar. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be careful how you phrase this thing. But uh, it looks like yes. we're about to have a match, Philip versus me. We'll put ourselves in the NWO. Oh no, no wait, the best one yet is the SummerSlam Summer 1988, 1988 ring. The, the yeah, original, brother. the original. All right, so we're about to have a match. Oh, you know what? Um, now, how how well does the creator system work? Uh, is it a little smoother this year? Oh yeah, it's not. Is it perfect? Probably not. But I turned on the title things. I just realized I have the million dollar belt. So you're going for it. We're going for the million dollar belt. Here you go. Here we go. <laughs> I love it's got your picture with the million dollar belt like it would do it. That's so cool. I Isn't cannot wait to get my PS5. I'm going to get a copy of it. When I have my PS5? Uh, well, I could get on the PS4, but like I want to wait. You, you got to see my picture, folks. I got my hands spread out wide. Just from spread out like, just like July. Da, da, da. <laughs> hey, yeah, he's wearing a, a red, white, and blue you know, flag looking shirt with a, a constitution tie. Yeah. It looks like that's awesome. The Declaration of Independence. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he he loves weird photos where I make faces with my eyes, and he loves to use those. So I've got this crazy look on my face as I'm uh, using, the, using an animated Spider-Man body. Can you believe it's been almost three decades, and WWE is I gotta remember. Okay. Oh, hey, look, I countered something. Cool. Look, I got Dusty Rhodes on my shirt. Oh, my goodness. I've got a fandom Nexus thing on my back and uh, Spider-Pan and the Lost Boys of Neverland, which eventually there will be a shirt. I need to get some shirts rolling. He's got me in elf shoes. I'm kind of like mixed between Peter Pan and Spider Man. Well, you are Spider Pan. Yeah, I am the Spider Pan. He's totally got this working. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button for the counter stuff. I, I've got <laughs> pictures of Dusty Rhodes, which is hard times, and he's also wearing a polka dot shirt. It took a lot of work, I got to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. Now, I suppose some of the biggest mo- news revolving Disney right now, or involving Disney, was the fact that a major operation of some sort down in Florida, they called it March Sadness, and that's really focused on human trafficking. Four Walt Disney World employees were arrested as part of this operation for human trafficking. That's downright scary. And this at the same time, I've seen people say, well, that's odd that Bob Chapek has thrown up uh, an opinion on there's a bill right now in Florida that I mean, here, here's the, the bare bones of the bill is that you're not allowed to talk about uh, basically sex for anyone from third grade and below, and that deals with, like, orientation or preferences and stuff like that, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Well, I guess preference isn't the word we're supposed to use. Uh, But, uh, yeah, like an orientation or a uh, gender identity, you're not supposed to talk to anybody a third grade or or younger. They don't feel that that's appropriate, and so they're trying to pass a law to say, hey, we're not going to talk about this in schools. Now, the opposition to that has decided to call this the don't say gay, which has absolutely nothing to do with the bill. But that's what they decided to call it, and Bob Chapek has registered in his opinion on this bill. At the same time, where we're, you know, they're basically, it's like, if you want to talk about sex to an under third grade, you might want to, you know, you might be a pedophile. Okay, we'll just go ahead with that. Um, and Bob Chapek, venturing his opinion when he's got problems in-house right now with some human trafficking that, I mean, they caught four people. I hope there's not more that they didn't catch. 
But that's that's frightening to me because it's Disney. It's a Walt Disney World park. And to have that seeping into the parks is frightening because that should be a safe, fun place for the entire family. And to know that there's people involved with human trafficking that manage to get through a screening process is frightening. What what people who do the human trafficking and where they can infiltrate is frightening. But anyways, I don't want to dwell on that. Uh, and some of you may, from what I said on that, probably are like, oh, I don't like listening to you no more. Uh, maybe so. Uh, that's I, You can have your opinion. I can have mine. That's that's the way it is. But anyways, but, uh, what that does remind me before I get into some other, some more fun stuff that we'd like to talk about is make sure if you enjoy this show that you are sharing it. Now, I, I have a habit of assuming that if you like the show, you might go ahead and share it. But from what I'm seeing from Dave Jackson, he says, no, if you're not telling people to share it, they won't. And it also goes for, you know, leaving reviews, because uh, by the way, my podcast reviews, if you go to NeverlandPodcast.com, I do have a link there for my podcast reviews for just $50 a year. That's right, $50 for the entire year. You can get your re- reviews from around the world that you normally would not see emailed to you, and you can have access and see what people are saying and maybe make adjustments to your show based upon what, what people like and what people don't like, so, provided, of course, you're getting good, helpful reviews. By the way, if you haven't left us a review on Apple iTunes or wherever you're listening, Please do, and then I will you know, be able to use that feedback. Also, of course, we'll talk about Patreon later, but let me go ahead and mention we do have a Patreon, and I really do depend upon those of you who wish to contribute on Patreon, uh, which it's patreon.com slash Podcast. Please help out. Uh, I'm struggling with gas prices myself. I actually, I've been enjoying being able to work from home, and that's about to change. I'm going to be required to actually drive 45 to 50 minutes to an hour, like, you know, every day, two, and then back again another hour to the office of where I work at. And so uh, my budget's getting about to get a good punch in the eye uh, with having to drive back and forth to work as uh, we're returning to, I guess, a, a, the normal. So I could really actually use Patreon support right now. So if you've been considering it, please do. I will really appreciate you. And I've, I've got very low level. I mean, if you just want to be able to toss a dollar in a month, I'm fine with that. that thank you for helping. Uh, but anyways, let's actually get to some fun news. Now, this is, you know, it's a little bit older news by now. But let me just read you a list here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time Arcade. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters NES. I guess I don't have to say TMNT every time. Uh, Turtles in Time for Super Nintendo. Tournament Fighters for Super Nintendo. The Hyperstone Hikes for Sega Genesis. Tournament Fighters Sega Genesis. Follow the Foot Clan on from the Game Boy. Uh, back from the sewers on the Game Boy, and also Radical Rescue on Game Boy. Yeah, that's pretty much every Super Nintendo, I mean, every Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game involving the 1990 film series and the 1980s and into the 90s. I mean, it ran for 10 seasons, uh, Ninja Turtles uh, series. This is what Cal, the, the Cal Naomi is calling the Cowabunga Collection. And... They're releasing it all. It's coming to Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. And wow. Okay. Uh, physical retail and digital versions will be available in 2022 at the price of $39.99. Fantastic. 13 games for $39.99. I mean, granted, these are older games, but these are great older games. If you're if you're my age, you play these. Or even younger than me, you probably play these. If you were, you know, I was. Let's say I about 13 years old, 1990, when the you know the, the movie came out. Of course, I was watching the cartoon, uh, but I was I was getting into my early teen, you know, preteen to teenage years, you know, w- watching this. Uh, so it hit kind of home that they were teenagers, I guess. Uh, but yeah, if, if you're younger than me by a few years, you were a kid, you know, watching this stuff and playing these games. You've got to be excited about this. Uh, but fantastic! I'm just I'm just thrilled to. I just wish I knew when in 2022. Because they didn't say. And I'm even looking at Konami's official website. They're not saying. But there's another game that they did say. Holiday 2022. Hogwarts Legacy from Avalanche Studios. Which our friend Adrian Ropp. uh, He's been at a uh, convention with us before. And he's uh, really good friends with uh, Lost Boy Eric. They've known each other for a very long time. Uh, He, uh, of course, has worked with Avalanche. uh, Doing all kinds of different things. Uh, You know, he's just a talented guy. Uh, he's not allowed to talk about the game until it released, though. But uh, well, when it releases, we'll see if we can get him on and talk about this game. But Hogwarts Legacy, it's a it's an open world. 
You can design your own Witcher wizard, and you're going to Hogwarts. The weird thing is, is you're coming in as a fifth year, but yet you, it's your first year of study. So you've got a lot of catching up to do. But you attend all kinds of classes. The room of requirement will allow you to have a, a, like a menagerie where you can collect some fantastic creatures. And there's a story, of course, to play along. But you're open and free to do just about anything. And they released a like 14-minute... Uh, I, I don't know if you would call it a preview or a little, not quite behind the scenes, but they were showing you the game and talking about all the stuff that you can do in this. It is available. I, I thought about playing it as a, as a trailer park thing, but uh, it's it's 14 minutes long. You can find it on YouTube on PlayStation's official YouTube channel. You can find this, I'm sure. I think Avalanche might even have an official PlayStation or, or uh, uh, official YouTube channel. Well, there is a YouTube.com slash Hogwarts Legacy uh, oh, look, they even have a Discord thing to talk about this. A Facebook page, there's a Twitter, there is an Instagram as well. Uh, I'm probably going to be going, uh, go like that Facebook page here. <laughs> because uh, this is coming out this holiday season. So you know what I want for Christmas? I am super duper excited for this. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator? Give me that sugar. Come here. Oh, oh, get him, Mama. Oh, get that gator. Yeah. The Neverland Trailer Park. There's chaos in you. The fun of Moon Knight is getting introduced to a new superhero in a new world. It's a real, legitimate character study. I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. Ah! Moon Knight is a spectacular character. He's got an incredibly unique visual look. Our job was to kind of put a lens on the things that had the most uh, dramatic juice and ultimately take the mental health aspect incredibly seriously. I am Steven. The way we're tackling the story, we learn about Steven and then learn about Mark. What's wrong with you, Mark? Why did you call me Mark? And they're the same person. The tone is like Fight Club meets Indiana Jones. It's a bit dark at times. To tie it into something so vast and supernatural, it's amazing. Thank you. Every aspect of this show has a duality, and we've shifted the paradigm. For me, what's really exciting is that it's totally unpredictable. Moon Knight is coming March 30th the Disney Plus and uh, that they this isn't really a regular like trailer this is obviously you know they're talking about it's a bit kind of a featurette uh, this has got Oscar Isaac Ethan Hawke and May Kalamawi I hope I'm saying her name right um, they had they talked to one of the directors they don't have him listed here on YouTube for me to be able to read his name directly to you but I am excited for this looks looks really cool this is almost exciting as uh, uh, apparently Daredevil and Punisher is available on Disney Plus. Now those they I guess they kept all the mature aspects of those Netflix series on Disney Plus from what I've been seeing on Facebook with people who have already been watching it. But we do have another Disney Plus series that we got a teaser for. Okay, so first off, I just want to say, I get it. You get what? High school. Kamala. Kamala. Another adventure shirt. Cute. She thinks I'm some kind of weirdo. You were a weirdo. Boys. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> you're kind of on my shirt. Sorry. But you're staring out the window in your little fantasy land. Kamala, hey, already? Really? Come on, like... Do I have to figure out my whole future before lunch, or is there, like... Maybe they're right. I spend too much time... in fantasy land. That is not to you. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who save the world. That's a fantasy, too. Something happened to you? No, why? Did you hear something? Come on, love. What does it feel like? Cosmic. I always thought I wanted this kind of life. 
but I never imagined any of this. Do you know what you are? I'm a superhero. June 8th, coming to Disney Plus, Ms. Marvel. And they... You know, this is one of the most unoriginal characters I think I've seen Marvel ever come up with. They've tried, though, to change it up. Because the Fantastic Four we know are coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and we already have Mr. Fantastic, and I've said many times, Ms. Marvel, every time I see something with her, she does things that Mr. Fantastic could already do. So what was the point of her creation? Well, I, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> There's reasons for her creation, that, and that, but they could have done better. I mean... With it coming up with some originality to the character, they even stepped her into the classic Ms. Marvel name, which has already existed before Ms. Marvel decided to become Captain Marvel again. So, yeah, you, she's not, there's nothing original, but they've tried to change it by giving her a different style of powers instead of just elongating. Uh, I call it stretching, uh, but uh, they're trying to call it enlarging. Uh, her arms, her limbs, and everything, and being floppy and flexible is the same way that Mr. Fantastic is, but she doesn't have quite all the same powers as Mr. Fantastic, just, you know, part of them. Yeah. Um, they've tried to make it where it's like some weird energy instead. So I, so I guess to make it different, because they realize Mr. Fantastic will be making an appearance at some point, and they don't want to have two characters that look the same in the uh, visual department, other than the Marvel comics already have done such a thing. But also to show their lack of originality, the style of this, did you see that movie a long time ago? And it was based off of a comic book, and um, I forgot the guy's name, but he was going versus the world. And he had to fight all the ex-boyfriends of this girl he met. Uh, and I, for some reason, the title of this movie escapes me. But the this trailer, and maybe, maybe the series is going to look this way, but they're trying to put like artsy things around and different reactions. Like when she doesn't like somebody, they have devil horns. And, but it doesn't go on the entire time, so maybe it's just like a gimmick, like she's, you know, trying to introduce herself by journaling it, and so it's, this is what she's drawing around people if she's journaling this stuff, which is more of a tell instead of show me, but I guess it's trying to mix it because we're sh being shown stuff, but she's telling us at the same time, which is usually a bad technique, so I am not excited about this. I'm going to probably watch at least an episode. I'm, I'll check it out just to see, but I have never been impressed with this character in the Marvel Universe. In the in a comic, you know, I in games she was they they made her the, your lead person in that Avengers game, and I I haven't been impressed with her. To tell you the truth, there's because the, it's the lack of originality with this character that it's disappointing. And they're you know they're like, let me go ahead and say this was their push. They thought, oh, we need to have a Muslim character. Well, that's all fine and good. Come up with something unique about that character. They didn't. They didn't come up with anything unique about this character. Same thing they kind of did with Miles Morales. So that's a whole other different issue. They once again they 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 want a character that's whatever you know uh, by color by name. They want to have a character like that, which is great. But then they shoehorn them into something that already existed and even give them powers that somebody else already has. That's that's disappointing because like okay cool you've came up with a new character. Give them something unique about them. Otherwise, I don't care. Now, I have got, grown to like Miles as he's gotten to have a film and ha his presentation in some video games. I, You know, he's a cool character. I like Miles. Did he need to be Spider-Man, though? No, Miles could have had his own unique power set that would have made him just as cool if they would have taken the time, the creativity to do it. So, yep, there's my soapbox for <laughs> Ms. Marvel. The commentary is a lot better this year as oh, well. a lot, lot better. I love this game. So far, I haven't really heard very many complaints about the gameplay. Yeah, the gameplay has been phenomenal this year. Oh, look at this! And the counters, it's, uh, they're not just normal countering. Now, I mean, you, if, you, if you hit the right button for somebody else's attack, you can block the attack that way. When somebody like locks in. And if you time things right, oh my goodness, he just, and they got size differences now to where him being much bigger than me, he was able to just pick me up and toss me with unhanded. That's like real life. <laughs> yeah. Although in real life, you have a lot of medical problems. That went, oh, oh no. I can't jump that far, apparently. Man, I would never do that. <laughs> Usually in the game, though. Me and Jeremy are always friends on here. Yeah. But, you know, friends also can be competitive. That's right. You see what it says on my shirt? Funky like a monkey. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Because Dusty Rhodes is going to be my manager. Nice. 
I can't remember what button was like to counter what. And unfortunately, this is only like the second time I've been over to play this, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, and he's killing me. Oh, now he's going to taunt me, so I'm going to come well, and I've kick been, him. That was a, I have been playing it for uh, about a week and a half. Yeah, so, so I'm getting schooled pretty good here, folks, I'll tell in, you that. In reality, I've mostly been creating. Of course, because that's, that's kind of what brought me back to start uh, watching again. Of course, I, I quit watching the, the WWE again, but... Uh, is but I started playing these games again when I saw how cool the character creation was back in the I think the uh, 2013 something like yeah that. like the 2013 when I saw all the stuff you're making and it's more fun creating uh, having all these characters and having ourselves in there than it is to play with the real wrestlers. But at least this year they have Hogan and yeah. Macho Man and and an NWO. It's it's a, a later years Hogan and not the early Hogan that I would prefer. But 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 you can make. I heard that there's some stuff you can do with it though. Yeah. Put him at least in the old wardrobe. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It just countered right away. Oh, man. Back and forth. That is one of the things that's cool about this is the counters. You can back and forth a lot. Oh. I don't know what I was uh, doing there. Well, this I was is trying a, to pick up and do yeah, something. This is an Iron Man match. So oh, we, it is? Yeah, so we can... Oh, and he's he's fo so fond of Iron Man matches because of the, uh, the, the endurance that goes on. And of course, we had a heck of a time pinning each other that day because it was, oh, ouch, right into the ring post. So this is going to be like a 30-minute minute, minute thing. Yeah. We go back and forth. So we're only going to probably fit one match into this episode. <laughs> it's this one here. Uh, but, yeah, they've changed the way the combat works entirely this year. Uh, and you, you got to change your way of thinking because you now have a – oh, it's the weapons are allowed. He's now pummeling me with a uh, kendo stick. Oh, I broke it. He broke it over my stomach. Oh, he broke out. <laughs> I end up doing this same weird kind of... It's kind of a cool kick maneuver. I love this uh, game. Man. Oh, man. I yeah, it's it's definitely one of the best ones I think they've ever done. Yeah. So you can do some quick light attacks. You can combo. Uh, was, I end up doing the same thing where I, I, I kind of climb up on his arm. I'm not and sure I, what move that is. I mean, as far as what you hit, I don't know if it's the... Uh, I'm going to try to hit him square. with the finisher here. Let's see if he'll probably get out of it because it warns you. Oh, I think he caught me. And, oh, my goodness. He's, uh, he kind of gave me a rock bottom in a weird way by countering my finisher. I think, yeah, you were able to steal finishers again like that. What did I do? Oh. I have seen on some footage. Oh, I'm stunned on the ground. I have seen footage where you where you can pick somebody up and put them up over your shoulders and then carry them over to different things and slam them into stuff. Oh. Oh, oh he out. got out. Oh, I reversed it. Yeah, but you're not even hurt. I have not done any damage, really, <laughs> to you. Oh, no. I'm going to get in there real quick. Oh, at least we don't get counted out. Yeah, it's an Iron Man match. He's going to... I'm going for a weapon. <laughs> I got three choices of kendo stick. Yeah, I forgot. At first, I thought they were a sword. I wish I had known. <laughs> Why would you have a sword in that? Then you kill somebody that I way. know it would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I killed him. It was hilarious. <laughs> Uh, so right now, Philip is up on top of the turnbuckle. Oh, no! And he stole my kendo stick! <laughs> oh, he got me. Ooh, that was a big flying <laughs> clothesline. Trying to set up a good combo. There we go. I see how I can pick this kendo stick back up. That was not how it did pick up a kendo stick. Oh, I can't get out of those. Where'd my kendo stick go? It's there. It's near the rope, I believe. Oh, you oh made, I made you bleed. You made no, me bleed I think my it own fell blood. out of the ring. You made me bleed my own blood, man. Oh. But the uh, the health system is completely different where you have a... Uh, like you can do permanent damage to the health uh, for at least the duration of the match. Yeah, there's two different bars. Like yeah. the, uh, one, There's a green one above it and there's a red one, which I kind of like because it's like... I, I got to say real, but you know the matches are... Yeah. If you don't know... <laughs> they're uh, an act but anyway uh, in reality they have uh, one moment you're doing good then you're not so you yeah. have two different bars and you'll come back from one and but I you also do have like your your body damage uh, area yeah uh oh but as oh. you've taken it's like damage it, it'll gray out part of where you're able to recover your health I love it that way it's really good 
Oh, oh that was wild. That was a great, great move. Oh, there, that's what it I'm is. I'm taunting by leaning back, trying to recover because I've got some body damage that I need to get back if I'm going to survive this You're match. Back. Uh, I've not even hurt you hardly. But you got a button match to kick out. We had a heck of a, a match the other day. We had uh, Andre and Hogan win that uh, Andre won yeah. and got a title belt from Hogan. But, we, man, we kicked out of the most amazing things here. I'm thinking big. Yeah, that's right, Michael Cole. I am thinking big. Splash! Oh, man, a big body dive on top of the fill. Beat me up bad. I don't think you're really hurt that bad, but... Oh, oh that's close. I'm getting clo you're getting close to well, getting Well, we had, me. like, split-second pinfalls uh, when last we played. Oh, now you're in that that thing. I wonder if I can do something spectacular to you while you're in that... Well, you probably would, Mr. Spider-Man. <laughs> Oh, I think this is a finisher yeah. that you gave me from standing position. Probably. Oh, no, I hit the wrong thing. Whoa! Oh, wow! I finally actually hurt you a little bit. Oh, not enough, though. But the this. funny thing is my health meter, even though it's not a big long one, it's all green again. See because I've, I've got well, around. It's like those matches, though. Like oh, one here's minute. my finisher. It's this really spectacular thing where I kick him in the face after this weird baseball slide. Let's see if he gets out. Oh, oh that, was, that was as close as you're going to get. Oh, without pinning him. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, I'm going for it again. Let's see if I get it. Last time he countered it. Here it comes. I slid around him and kick him Ooh. right in the face. All right, let's see if I've knocked enough out of you. Oh, one point barely. For me. Barely got one point. So far, you got the belt. Uh, so far. I better keep on you, though. I kind of wondered if you'd get a little bit of recovery in between matches, because, like, the old games, uh-oh, 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 he's going to get me now. He's going to get me. We'll see. Oh, he oh I countered! Oh, counter and counter and another counter! <laughs> it's going back and forth. Oh, oh here's my great kick. signature. I do the super kick thing. Yeah, you're doing that Bam. glow. The glow thing. Oh, man. Oh, I got you stunned again. I'm going to go for the pin. Oh, oh that's what was, that was very close. Very close. Oh, man. This is where it gets down to the do or die because everything is like lethal. I love this finisher, though. That's kind of cool. I thought you would. Yeah. I try to get what he likes, except for a couple scenes of things he doesn't like. Uh, yeah, one of my taunts apparently is that you can't see me. Oh, you got oh, me. Two points. I can't believe the comeback I've managed over here. That's good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's coming back. The big man's bringing the beat down. I hope this is fun for y'all listening. I've worried sometimes that I'm not quite scratching the itch for the, li the average listener these days. Well, you get on to do your best. Oh, I better start kicking out. There oh, we go. you did it. You got it. Ooh. I wasn't paying attention. I started talking. But, yeah, I've worried about that sometimes, that we're not quite feeling the need that we need, uh, normally would have. Here we go. Boom. But hopefully you're hearing the amount of fun we're having with it. That's, that's, I think, the greatest review we can give to this game is it's just doggone fun. It is. And it's not glitchy like the previous. No, man. It, see, the other ones, sometimes the game would pause right in the middle, and you'd have to start over, wouldn't you, Jeremy? Yeah. Almost oh, got it another one. See, this word almost seems like one of those real matches. Yeah. I'm just going to say real matches because, you know, we all know. Here it comes again. Boom. Boom. <laughs> right in the head. Right in the noggin. That's where I've done the most damage is your head. <laughs> oh, the, and that's realistic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Woo! man. Three points. Three points. I know this is going to come back at me eventually because I know how tough he is. Uh-oh. He's countered. Oh, oh that's oh! it. You, you countered it. That was good. That was a double counter. That was wild. Oh, man. It's, it's so unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen. Something's just hit the right button at the right time. And oh, oh man. Big go. suplex. Big suplex. And I've got some, an actual injury to my chest. There's a, a red marker oh, yeah. over my name indicating my chest that oh. I think it's some serious damage. Ooh, that was brutal. Oh, no. Oh, I got a resiliency. Use the resiliency to kick out. There you go. Because <laughs> I didn't think I was getting up out of that one. Oh, man. 
He hurt me bad. Uh oh. I don't have resiliency left. Can I kick out? Oh, Ooh, barely. 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 Oh, man. Oh, man. The commentary is much better, although I'm barely paying attention to the commentary as I'm talking to you folks. Yeah, but it's fun, and it is a lot better. I mean, the old ones would say, well, this guy, and it just yeah. there's nothing to it. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I feel the pain coming. Oh, oh I got, got out of it. I'm bleeding pretty bad, though. Oh, I want to go up the ropes. That, oh, there we go. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. He got up too fast. Oh. Oh, that looked really bad. Yeah, there was a glitch on that part. Well, I think it was just that I screwed up so bad. That could be. Oh, right in the kneecap. Oh, man. Right in the shoulders. Oh. Oh, I wasn't trying to do that, but. Wasn't trying to break me. What? <laughs> One, two. Ooh. I He's going to get a point here. I almost dropped the mic just then. I, I uh, caught Careful. It. I caught, well, I, I switched my leg around for a minute. That's, <laughs> I'm not used to having a mic set in front of me. I'm trying to remember that you can do those combinations. I don't know that I can do any moves to pick him up. That's one oh. of the things that's realistic about this is I'm a oh, lightweight. so big, yeah. And he's a heavyweight. Yeah, I think I made, oh, I I made you jump a, right over you. Yeah. I made you a technician kind of macho man -ish. Yeah. Because you would be, I mean. I'm trying to pick that kendo stick. I'm back out. We're outside the ring again. Oh, no, I hit the wrong. I was trying to get my kendo stick, and I end up getting back into the ring here. What's strange about it is it. when I'm creating this is trying to be realistic uh -oh, uh -oh, and not realistic. Uh -oh. oh, you missed. Oh, I grabbed a hockey stick. He got that kendo stick and is beating the daylights out of me. Oh, the pins I can't, apparently do count outside as well. Oh, man, he's going to get all kinds of wet. What was that? You see the weird scoot? Oh, he's got a stop sign. Oh, that is strange. Whoops, I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, I know you get too close to the thing. There I got it. Stop sign. Oh, <laughs> I have not managed to hit you with a single weapon yet. I did get three points, though. Clean and, and honest. Oh, man. Oh, man. And speaking of Scott Hall, he is on here, and you've got the N NWO oh, edition yeah, both of, of them, the game. Both of versions. Both, uh, he's both, um, oh, what's his name? Um, NWO, and what was it called? Um, when he was Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon. Oh. Oh, you got me. Got him with a hockey stick. Oh, he took it back right across the chest. Oh. My gosh, we take it back. Oh, he did. <laughs> oh, man, cracked me over the head with it. Now, in uh, actual matches in the real world, you're not allowed to hit anybody over the head with stuff because of concussion protocols. They're, they're a lot more cautious. But yeah. in the game, nobody gets concussed. Yeah, not really. Well, and, and I turned on the, the blood thing. So we can bleed because, boy, yeah. are we bleeding. Make we can a, make each other bleed our own blood. That's right. Bleed your own blood. <sighs> Want to see a movie? Yeah. Any good? It was bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good, bad thing. My eyeballs could have been sucked from their sockets. I like it a lot. The best movie ever made. A fandom a nexus, nexus, nexus movie review. Well, of course, we have to talk about Turning Red. We've still got a lot of Disney fans that still uh, appreciate this show, I guess. <laughs> We've kind of made that turn from Disney. But, of course, this is a Pixar film, and normally, you know, I really enjoy Pixar films. And I'm really excited for Pixar films to go and see them. Uh, I've never been disappointed. This one I was disappointed because it was not as good as what I thought it was going to be. And in that simply that this movie was just okay. Now, I will say when Pixar makes a movie that's just okay, it's better than what Disney does for just okay. For reference, see my review of Encanto. But this one... Yeah, the style of it uh, was seemed to have a very much a Japanese anime uh, style and the modern humor where you're trying to appeal to smaller children that have the attention span of, you know, about two seconds. So you have to have some sort of a joke every two seconds, whether or not the joke is actually even funny, because they weren't. Occasionally there was something that made me kind of smile, but this movie that... In the trailers and all the talks, like, oh, this movie is just like so funny. We're getting back to making funny movies. It wasn't really that funny. It was like, well, okay, that's kind of okay. That's kind of cute. Okay. And the the big talk I was hearing, oh, you know, turning into a giant red panda was symbolic of of going through puberty. No, the puberty was just a joke. Uh, there in the first part of the movie, when she's trying to hide that she's turned into a red panda, and everybody's thinking she's having her uh, first. Monthly visit, as we'll say, because I want to keep this in case you got your kids in the car with you. And but that's the thing: if uh, you're making jokes that are aimed at you know the under ten lot or whatever, the little kids, 
maybe you're not ready to have the discussion with them about a change that uh, women are going to go through when they hit about this age, about 13 or so, or maybe earlier, maybe later. You know, it, it varies. But maybe you're not ready for this conversation. So they're it's like they're targeting their subject matter, perhaps, or what they're claiming the subject matter was, for, you know, a preteen to early teen, and they're making jokes for a five-year-old. And so that that doesn't kind of mesh. Uh the, an over the overreacting uh, for from the anime because everything was over the top. Everything whoa ah, and the eyes doing weird things and all the whoa you know very much anime. And if I guess if you're a fan of anime, you're fine with this. Uh, so maybe that was fine, or you know. But there was a sequence in this movie that I thought, oh, she must be having a bad dream or or visualizing what could happen, which was completely over the top and complete nonsense. And well, then it turns out, oh no, wait, that really did just happen. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. So there was a lot of just buffoonery stupidity that insulted me as I was watching this because normally Pixar is pretty intelligent. I mean, especially look at something like Inside Out. There is a good coming of age story where there's there's a sudden maturity, an emotional maturity that was really, I think, at that middle school age. And uh, heck, I was driving a school bus and we actually took a bunch of middle schoolers uh, for the school I was working with. We did a field trip out to Inside Out because one of the teachers had seen this was like, yes, this is exactly Something that that middle schoolers are going to go through with emotional maturity and going from one dimensional emotions to a blend of emotions. And there was so much in Inside Out that was smart and it had some humor to it. And Pixar is usually fairly smart and very heartfelt. This, I didn't feel a thing. I tell you the truth. I didn't feel a thing. The mother was completely unbelievable. Uh, and it, it just there's so much stuff that just didn't make sense. But I'm like, am I supposed to give like, yay, family out of this? I didn't. Uh, it was it kind of just a little bit fun to watch. Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch, but that's why I say it's just okay. But what bugs me also is when you have a, you know, okay, you know, so, somewhat lackluster for, and, and really below the standards of Pixar, they wanted to tout it like, look, this is the first time we've had all women writer directors and everything. It's like, well, you just insulted women, I think. Either that or, you know, you were so focused on doing that that you didn't focus on actually making a good movie. You know, don't focus so much on, on, Oh, look, they're all women, you know, and, and like, hey, look, we've got a good story. And, you know, and oh, by the way, here's the people who directed it. But you don't have to like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, it's a virtue signal. And it's not really worrying about making a quality film. And I expected better. I mean, even the, the writer uh, and director, Domi Shi, I think that's how you pronounce her name, uh, did that little, um, what was it, Bao, which was a really smart, sweet little short. So I know she's capable of coming up with stuff, but somehow or another, this just missed the mark. And what I've been seeing a lot from actual reviews, people say, I couldn't relate to this. Now, maybe some women could relate to it. Did it? Did that relate? Did you relate, ladies? Uh, and maybe I'm, I didn't relate because I'm a guy. But that, that here's the thing, though. Pixar movies have usually had universal appeal, and everybody could relate. This one was so focused that half your audience... But no clue, you know. Like I don't know, was that oh, was that symbolic? Because I didn't see the symbolism for puberty. I saw it as them making a joke with uh, everybody saying, "Oh, do you need a pad?" Uh, you know, it, it was a continued joke for her turning into a big red panda. Uh, so yeah, I was disappointed. I'm probably not going to watch it again uh, because I, you know, I kind of kind of didn't care. Uh, so this was very disappointing. So yeah, that's my opinion, and I had high expectations because I generally Pixar can usually do no wrong, but. I don't know. They went wrong here. Come on, pick up that hockey stick. There we go. Come back in the ring, Phil. Come on in. The water's fine. What other uh, classic? I, go, I did see uh, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase is in there. We yes. got Macho Man. Macho Man. Ooh, we were able yeah. to recreate the Mega Powers versus Mega Bucks match somebody, at SummerSlam. Somebody put a logo online. Oh, one of the great things about this about, wow. about this one, yeah, I backed up for a minute. Yeah, you dodged. Oh, there's the dodge button somewhere on this thing, yeah, too. I believe it's uh, R1. I could be wrong. i got to remember that. that. You can dodge a strike. Oh, I managed to counter that. One thing that's really great about this game, too, is is if no matter what system you have, if you put it online, you can share it with others. Uh, all Across, like, Xbox or yeah, whatever can help? Xbox, no, that's better. That's you get an improvement. Xboxes, uh, let's say, uh, Superstars or whatever, um, we can use them. If nice. It, yeah, if it's a PC, we can use them. That's definitely an improvement oh, over yeah. previous years. Going off the top rope. Big move. Oh, and he got out of it. I landed on my tuchus. 
Oh, and I just took a hockey uh, stick across the face. Oh, how'd that happen? That was weird. It's like I hit something that wasn't there. <laughs> I, mean, I think right, I, I'm going to hit you with a ladder now. Oh, Monk. you got me. Oh, okay. So the X button will make me set up the ladder. Ooh, I'm going up the ladder if I can. How do I climb the ladder? Oh, uh, I want to say L1. Yeah, L1 didn't work. <laughs> we we both missed wildly. Maybe I can fling you into the ladder. Uh oh. Oh, well, I flung you over to the ground. Let's see. Looks like he has his finger on the trigger now. Here it comes. I knocked the ladder over, but here's that big, massive kick to the face again. Let's see if that stuns you enough to get the pin. I think so. Oh, oh four Barely. points. I can't believe I'm actually winning this thing. Yes, you are, and you're laughing at me. <laughs> I figure get that taunt in when you know you got the chance. Because I'm trying to, because taunts, uh, they've got to where they can heal you a little bit or something or give you a little bit of a, a bonus. I got a lot of finishers built up, but I'm trying to use them to keep them down. <laughs> well, that's working. I'm scoring points. You got a couple of finishers built up. I just got to hope you don't get them on me. Granted, I've got a good lead here, and you got 13 minutes to make a comeback. Of course, knowing you, you'll you'll have the way to do it. Ooh. Of course, I I haven't gotten to challenge Seth. Seth has been like super oh, dangerous. He, He's really good at countering on the old games. I barely got the shoulder up. Oh man. Oh, you missed. Only, only threw you somehow. Yeah, it is a little different trying to figure out your position within the ring because the camera angle is down lower to look more a little like ringside, so you it's hard to tell ring position when you're lining up some things. I noticed I did have trouble last time with that. Oh, oh, whew, saw that coming. Got a good counter in there. Twisting his arm, put one leg over and kick him in the face. Well, I think we got a new million-dollar champion, that's for yeah, sure. That's right. Let's see if I can. Uh oh Oh, whoops. We both just <laughs> dove and missed each other. I was just trying to get out of the way. I, I don't know how I end up just doing that exact same move over and over again. I don't mean to. Well, it happens. Yeah. Oh, man. Big kick just missed. That was a nice little combo I just managed to pull off there. Well, some of the uh, blocks and all are hard to do once you're worn out, too. Yeah. Oh. Managed to dive my 240-pound frame. I don't know if that's enough to hurt you, but apparently it was. Yeah. Ooh. Egging you on there with a little taunting. Then getting smacked in the face from a treble. Uh-oh. 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 Here comes something big. Oh, somehow. It did not. Uh, it missed. Yeah, I didn't name with you. Uh-oh. Ooh, a big headbutt right to the jaw. This is kind of a fun little series of maneuver for uh, a rope maneuver. I did a lot of leapfrogging. He's really slowly getting up. I don't know what you call that move, but I, it's like I snap mare him onto the ground, then kind of do a weird slide around him, and then jump kick him into the face. Well, you got me good now. Yeah, seven points up. I can't believe I managed that. Oh, uh-oh. Now it's time to pay the piper. Uh-oh. Here comes his finisher. Uh, this is going to be brutal. I just know it. Oh, I got out of it again. Oh, my gosh. I cannot believe I managed to counter that. Uh-oh. Oof. I'm starting to take some beating now. He's coming back. I made the big man mad. It's coming. <laughs> Payment's coming. Oh, not there. No. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to stop oh, me no, right no. where you shouldn't have. He's got some moves where he'll walk on you, and he's a big man to crush your chest and cavity in on you. Yeah, there's a couple of moves I'm going to change on myself because I know some of my old ones I used to do, they're not on there right now. Uh, Uh-oh. See if I can kick out. That was close. Pin drop close. Pin drop close. If you manage to hit that finisher on me, I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of it. Oh, oh you're spinning out of that. Oh, man. I wonder if I can do anything off the ropes. I don't think so because I'm not a high flyer. Well, technicians are close to that, though. Yeah. Technicians, we got a lot of cool-looking moves. That's kind of what I was aiming for. Uh-oh. I'm in for it. No! I was going up the turnbuckle, and he hopped up and knocked me right off of it and out of the ring. <laughs> what do I do in the chicken dance? It looks like it. 
We were well, well yeah, he was taunting inside the ring, I was taunting outside the ring. Ooh. Uppercut him right in the back. Let's see if I can hit this finisher again. Man. Yeah, if our characters were friends in this, I think that I went at the friendship because I've got eight points now. It seems awful. Uh-oh. I'm doing some weird taunting dance. I don't know what that was, but he just left me open and vulnerable. Uh-oh. Here he comes. Can I get out of it? Oh, he I, did. I, I cannot believe how many times I've gotten out of that. I got so lucky yeah, my, with that. My moves are not that grand as far as I need to fix on a few of them. Yeah, you're probably because you're uh, like a big heavyweight. I bet you some of your stuff is slower, too. Well, I have most of them based on Braun Strowman. Ah. Not speed so much, but power. Yeah, that's a lot of it. Firing off rapid kicks. This almost feels like I'm being too brutal to my bestie here. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's like, man, I got nine points. I don't know how I managed to crew it, but it's like, you know, I gotta, keep, I gotta keep in it. No problem, bud. Ain't bothering me. I'm bleeding all over your leg, pinning you this way. <laughs> uh oh. Ooh. Oh, crushing the cage. I walked on you. Yep. Now in real life, if I was to do that, I'd probably break something. Yeah. Honestly. Well, in the game, I'm actually a tough wrestler. Oh, man. <laughs> if he did it to me in real life, it'd be bad. Well, thank God I wouldn't do that to anybody. Yeah. I really wouldn't. That would be terrible. Well, unless you Plus, needed to do it to save your own well, life or somebody different. else. That's you'd do different. it to protect somebody, you would. Yeah, yeah. You'd hold somebody down the best way you could and say, enough is enough. You're not hurting nobody. Yep. Especially if somebody <laughs> was hurting one of you, like your nephews or something. Yeah, but I'd still or, try not to walk on I'd probably fall. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your knees is not as great. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a shame we got to get old. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, that's a far life. I had it? even, uh, I guess it was Friday, I just walking up and down our, our small, crushing me, our small stairs. My knee just started randomly hurting. I don't know why. I don't know why we swallowed the fly. <laughs> I guess we'll die. <laughs> Says the man dressed like a spider pan. <laughs> yep. Looks like I got Hulk pants on. Oh, oh, that was a go. cool, that like a big to... leg drop from the top rope. Six and three quarters minutes left in go. this you match. 11. You got 11 hey, points. Goes to 11. It does go to 11. I think I know a couple of moves I want to change the line. And, uh... oh, I can't believe that I'm doing that, that John Cena taunt at you. Uh-oh. Oof. I can't believe how many times I've managed to counter. I've somehow like found the right timing and just got it. Let's see. I feel like I've done that finisher to you like so many times. <laughs> I know one thing I keep doing wrong. I don't have the moves memorized yet, and I keep hitting R2 instead of R1 in one of them. Yeah, because R1 is that dodge. Yeah. I figure I've pinned you enough times. I, I'm not going to pin you no more. No, you can pin me. I don't care. <laughs> I feel like I got 11 points, and there's six oh, minutes left. Right. There's no way you're coming back. Now, I still have it on normal because I don't figure there's just yet. We'll, we'll do uh Oh, I just set myself and got myself in trouble oh, out of the ring. I go. Yeah, normally you'll put it on a hard difficulty level. Uh -oh. oh, he's tearing up the turnbuckle. That one even Perfectly legal in an, an Iron Man match. So, oh, oh, I think I'm going out of the ring again. Oh, oh, brought hard back into the ring. I smell the finisher coming. Oh, oh, and I still got out of it. My goodness. I don't know how I've gotten good at that all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, what is this running in place dance thing I'm doing? I want to see if I can slam you at all, but I guess not. I seem to be a lot of a, a mainly a striker. Well, it's probably what I have to do with a, a bigger opponent. You know, it's a lot of strikes. Well, you probably I, would use my gravity against me. Yeah. Well, the fact that I couldn't pick you up. Oh, that was a cool looking elbow drop. Whoa. All right, a dozen pinfalls. And, oh, I don't mean to laugh at you. <laughs> oh, and I feel bad now. You don't have to feel bad, man. It's just a game. 
I feel like I need to put video of this thing up online if we can save the video after well, we're fun. done. Do it. He won the million dollar belt. Except for it depends. You know, I know on the PS4 and I've got settings where I can get an hour's worth of video and then I can put it up. By the way, did you know we have the Neverland official gaming channel where I have a lot of gaming videos up and even more to come? That's where I'd like to put this. But I don't know how you save video on a PS5 because I don't own one and I haven't explored it all yet. Oh, going to get it in there one more time. Oh. I feel like you're going to come away from this match with some actual injuries. Um, it could be. 13. Now it's an unlucky number. Well, just, just see how it just came from. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you gave me the top where I slapped my backside at you. I usually oh, did. I, wow. usually, I usually do. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> this love giving me that It's so funny. Yeah, he, he likes to capture the goofier half of my personality. <laughs> but, oh, there's me doing it. Uh, yeah, tantrum all out Ric Flair. Yeah. Oh, got love Flair. Uh-oh. Oh, I saw that coming. I knew that knee was coming right into my head. Well, I saw that counter coming. For some reason, when I do that one, it, it looks like it's going to go farther than it does, and I kick from way too far. See what my signature move actually is here. Oh, that's a pretty good signature there. Yeah, I don't know if you even got enough strength or health. To... No, well, I I'm, do see you're, you're getting a blue icon pointing up like it's it's reviving you a little bit. <laughs> I can't seem to. Let's get, see if I can get well, good at dodging. I'm practicing dodging. <laughs> and it's working. Oh, but I see I have an indicator that allows uh, only so many times that you can dodge where you run out of some endurance, apparently. And I'm waiting for that endurance to come back. That's interesting. So you can kind of dodge around, but which it is would, cool. It would, it would uh, wear you out after yeah, a while. Yeah, it would. Oh, and now I'm taking some beating. Uh-oh, here comes that finisher. If he gets it, I know he's going to get a pinfall out of me because I'm as weak as he is actually right now. But I keep managing to get out of it somehow. Ooh, he went with a high punch. I went with a low punch, and I actually connected mine. Yeah, I still haven't seen where, if there was, like, how the submission moves stuff. Or how yeah, to I was looking for that because I don't remember which one. Is it uh, X? No, I don't I think don't know. so. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's R. No, that's that's pin, isn't it? Uh, pin is the, is pushed down on the right stick. Yeah, that's what I meant by R. Man, with the wrestling games we used to have as we were kids, if we had known that this was what we were eventually would get, we'd have just been blown away. Oh, yeah. We, we, well, we couldn't even imagine that it would look like this. Yeah. Or even be able to create ourselves as wrestlers. Yeah, because back when we first could, they didn't look anything like this. Yeah. But we were just happy that you could do it. And I remember like the old WCW uh, game I remember you had on Nintendo. Yes. I eventually ended up getting a copy of it as well. And I didn't, you know, it was World Championship Wrestling. Do, 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 remember hearing do. Gene. <laughs> I, mean, I miss old Gene. Uh, did he have his voice in that old? Uh, I don't know if he I'm did. I'm thinking or of not. the NES game. But I know eventually he did. Yeah. Oh yeah. We've had a lot of different. You know, like I, I actually, you know, people don't really care for like the Raw is War or whatever. It was on the PlayStation, or the two yeah. raw type games. I really liked it because it was like two directional pad maneuvers and a button, and you could pull off a move at any time. Uh, you know, I, I really liked how that worked. And that's uh, some of the earliest creative characters I remember uh, playing with. Now, WCW had some pretty good games on the Nintendo 64, and you had also WCW versus the World on the PlayStation. I don't recall if you could create characters on that, though. There was a... Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of the one on WCW that was really good at uh, where you can start really creating and I can't think of what it was called Smackdown I remember had pretty pretty decent creation but a lot of times you'd have to grab the entrances off of other wrestlers oh and time has run out yeah boy I think I almost had that one <laughs> yeah I didn't mean to win that well but I well, well that I, happened uh, as it happened holy cannoli and I get the million dollar belt. Money, 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 money. Money, money. money. Now, if Ted DiBiase sees that, he's going to come <laughs> after you. <laughs> he's another one I met, and I just loved him. Oh, I'd like to be able to meet him. He was great, man. 
great personality. I was kind of wondering the highlight reel. Well, of course, the highlight reel of being beating you up with that thing. All right, but while you're probably going to go and adjust your move set here real quick, um, I do want to get a movie review in. I'm going to hit the button for it. That's the news button, in it? Yeah. Oh, Want to see a movie? Yeah. Any good? It was bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good bad thing. My <laughs> eyeballs could have been sucked from their sockets. I like it a lot. The best movie ever made. A fandom a nexus, nexus movie review. All right. So the, at least the, because it's one that we can both discuss is the Adam Project, which I believe we uh, did. We look at the trailer last week. I think I, I think I did put the trailer in last week. Uh, the Adam Project, starring uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I don't know who played the kid. And then uh, Zoe... No, not Zoe. Oh, wow. You know, Gamora. Yeah. Um, um, I, th- I keep thinking her name is Zoe, but I don't think that's right. I, I don't have my laptop here. To, I don't have my notes. Uh, but uh, she's in there. Um, this is by the same... Uh, like I think he was both a writer and a director, or at least a producer, for Free Guy. Um, I want to I want to say it's Adam something. Wow, I feel so unprepared <laughs> to go through, but uh, and I I've heard some talk about him perhaps doing the third Deadpool movie because he's working so well with Ryan Reynolds making two really good movies. I really enjoyed that movie, Adam Project. Yeah, the Adam Project. I had a lot of heart. I guess some Jennifer, of the critics have not been really kind to it. Jennifer. But, uh, Gar- Gar- Jennifer Garner. Garner? Yeah, yeah, you had a lot of Marvel actors here. Jennifer Garner, yeah. and then you had um, um, Ryan. Ryan Reynolds, of course, is Deadpool. Uh, then uh, Hulk, the modern. Oh, wow. oh yeah, uh, my brain I is gone. I see him. I see him. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Mark yeah. Ruffalo actually in a role in this. And see, I think I I, I counted up like four different people. Yeah, because um, then Gomorra as well. Yeah, that's right. And I cannot believe I forgot. I keep wanting to say her name is Zoe, but I don't think that's right at all. Yeah, she also is a, it's a Star Trek actor. Yes, yes, she was Uhura uh-huh. in uh, the newer very pretty, Star Trek. Very yeah, pretty lady. Very lovely lady. It's almost weird not seeing her in green. Uh, you got to get used <laughs> to her seeing her normal skin color. I got so used to her green, but this movie actually did have a lot of heart. And uh, But th- the best way I can kind of describe, I don't want to spoil anything because you haven't watched this. It's on Netflix right now. Uh, and I do definitely recommend it. I wouldn't have turned the volume down on that, but I guess that's fine. I was going to let it go in the background. Uh, but imagine Back to the Future 2. You have Biff's future. Imagine that the movie has had started and Biff's future was already where the movie is set, where it's already happened. The Biff, Biff Tannen ruling everything. We already had the bad guys have one, and uh, Ryan Reynolds' character, Adam, well, his adult version of Adam, Reed, uh, has come, come back into uh, 2020, to uh, try to find a way to fix all he was trying to get in 2018. He's trying to f- fix because he had the theory that somebody had went back in time and altered something to where uh, he describes the future as like, you did you see Terminator 2? Yeah, it's about like that. Uh, and, you know, everything's really bad under this person who kind of uh, exploited the um, time travel or, or the research that uh, his father had done that would made time travel possible. Uh, there's a lot of good heart, a lot of good stuff that'll make you want to hug your mother. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, uh, a lot of things that shows I, you know, I I really can kind of buy into this because I, you know, being a, a man of faith, mm-hmm. that I, God does have a good plan for you, and uh, the the way he seemed to be destined, and that the way he was like, you know, he was gonna find his wife no matter if history was altered or something. Somehow or another, they would find each other. I like that that had, had that belief. I don't want to tell you how that pays off. Because uh, I don't want to spoil the ending. The kid actor was outstanding. Yeah, the kid playing like a young Ryan Reynolds. You know, uh, you that buy, was a lot of fun. You could buy it. It was. Yeah, he seemed like him. You know, and, <laughs> and I, I love uh, how Ryan was kind of trying to teach himself a lesson in a sense. You know, uh, yeah, he's like you jerk. You know, he's like because yeah. I think we all do that if we look back. We're like I we wish I could we, tell myself. Yeah, you know, not I would tell to do myself that. not to do this. But I like that he learned something from his kid self too. Yes, that was neat. They learned stuff from each other. Yeah, because I bet there's a lot of stuff that I, I as a as a kid self would want to tell my adult self. Like uh, uh, Jonathan Johnson, speaking of Diz Radio, uh, was watching this I guess last night and mentioned in our Facebook group that he reminded him all of, uh, of Disney's The Kid with Bruce Willis yes. and the one kid from uh, the Santa Claus two and three. I think he's in there. Uh, where the kid is like looking at his and the doll is like, oh my goodness, is this what's wrong with me? It's like you forget what you what it was like to be a kid and some of the lessons that you knew. Yeah, and so it's like they're able to kind of teach each other. 
uh, some things that overall makes the quality of life better. Now, I thought, though, since the whole goal of the uh, Adam Reed character is he's trying to fix something that was that altered history, I wondered if some uh, there's a particular event that I thought was going to get changed that I was kind of surprised didn't. I don't want to say what it was, but I, I was kind of surprised by that. But, uh, you know, it still worked very well. Uh, the way they presented it, and uh, there are a lot of, like I said, a lot of good heartfelt movies, a lot of good hugs. It's going to make you appreciate your parents. I know you're saying because I felt the uh, same thing. I mean, now I know there's a lot of imperfect parents and a lot of uh, bad things going on with some parents, but most parents, you know, are pretty good and are trying the best they can. Even if they mess up, they even don't if they mess up, they're 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 trying. And you know, being a parent is not easy. I'm sure. I'm, I mean, I don't have any children, but I I have friends with children and. You know, heck, we one of our friends is actually their their son's ADHD that just got diagnosed, and she was telling me some of the stuff uh, little Reese has been doing, and they're just having a heck of a time. Uh, being a parent is rough; it is not for the faint hearted. He's a sweet kid. Yeah, he's a sweet kid, but uh, you know, kids can be tough, but they they learn and they learn from you, and you're just doing the best you can. Uh, and really, we see a lot in this movie. We see Jennifer Garner as the mother is just doing the best that she can. And uh, really, you know, we see how little a- Adam as a kid is really not helping her. And I, I love this uh, this scene where young, the, the older Adam Reed kind of bumps into his mom and uh, tells her, you know, by, his way, by the way, you, your kid doesn't hate you. I know he loves you very much. And one thing he, I love that he tells her, you know, uh, maybe he doesn't understand that you're grieving too. You can and, see in his eyes, he's uh-huh. got this. T- I mean, what a great actor! Yeah, it's. I, it reminded me of Scrooge. Yeah. Niagara Falls, Frank. Niagara Falls. <laughs> yeah, we're well, seeing his mother again. Oh, and the, it's it's just really, really got a little, got a good family heartfelt stuff going on in there, and then a lot of fun, a lot of great you know adventure action. Uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish, and I highly recommend it for just a good time. Uh, and you can you can bring your family in to watch this. There was a little bit of language and some yeah. things, but it, uh, I don't think it it went near as you know. Free Guy had a few moments that were a little too close to R to me, uh, but this one didn't go anywhere. This was very much you know. Well, it was I guess a PG thirteen, uh, but yeah. Overall, I highly recommend this. This was great. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it. Uh, I enjoyed it too. I enjoyed a lot of the, uh, as you were saying, the heartfelt stuff, mm-hmm. especially uh, seeing himself as a kid. Yeah, and the kid did teach him a lot, but at first they made it look as if it wasn't going to be that way. Yeah, and I love the, uh, and you kind of see this in the, uh, the the trailers where Ryan Reynolds is like, "Oh, I got to go back to the kid version of self that I dislike the most," but then he realized that you're actually with the best version of me. Yeah, uh, I just I love that. You know, it's just really really good, and I. I like this. You know, we we do get to see a little bit of how things end up uh, later on, and we see a, a slightly different adult Adam Reed mm-hmm. of how the whole thing kind of changed. Yeah, I really him. enjoyed it. So, yep, just really, really great. I, I was trying to be very careful to not spoil anything, but I mean, it's a little predictable. You know, everything's going to work out great in the end. Yeah, you know, because it's 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 a feel good movie. It really is. It's a feel good movie. Boy, that I feel good watching it. Yeah, me too. So. Hey, of course, it has, as all do, but you, uh, all time traveling type of films always have a Back to the Future ish, yeah, type of thing. It did. It did have some Back to the Future feel, and it even went with the, the time travel aspect, as Doc Brown would have explained it, where you know it's cause and effect that it has to be in that 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 time stream. You know, although you could branch things off to different things. You know, and it was just funny with somebody who's playing in some Marvel movies, although he's you know not in the same. Marvel movies where they've talked about this, but he's like, there is no multiverse. Quit watching the movies. You know, <laughs> so it's like the opposite of what we got in Avengers Endgame. It's like, it's not like what you saw in Back to the Future. Okay. And also, uh, I like, he's so serious in a sense <laughs> yeah. uh, that you just want to punch him at one point. <laughs> he's grim Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny. But he can, he still manages to be very entertaining when he's just being a grim kind of jerk. Yeah. You know, he's, it's like Bill Murray. It, it could just be a jerk, but you just love him as a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he's really good at that. He's just really good at being a charming jerk that you just can't help, but you just kind of love him. So, yeah. All right. Well, it's about time that we wrap this up. So, I would, of course, like to thank Karen Kennedy, Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite, and Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite and Wall Show for their contributions to our sounders that you hear in the show. Remind you to find us at podcast at neverlandpodcast.com on, well, I guess that's our email address. <laughs> our Twitter is actually Neverland PCast. I'm getting the habit of not checking Twitter. Twitter's become a, a cesspool. We're on Facebook, though. We have both a group and a page for you to simply like. And I do try to share when I find something cool. 
that I want to share with you. I tend to post it there. Uh, I need to have more discussion with y'all in there, but I don't do a lot of things on Facebook, and I'm kind of, I leave, I've almost left Facebook behind, but I need to do stuff beca- with y'all. I want to interact with y'all. I really, uh, I need to spend more time on Discord, too. I had meant to get a good Discord thing going as well, but you can leave us a voicemail, I think. Uh, I, like I said, I, I, I got notifications they were shutting it down because I wasn't really using it. 816-226-6492. Hopefully that still gets you to me. You can remember on our website, you can join the Neverlanders, pick yourself an official nickname, and don't forget our Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast, where you can contribute to help keeping this show going, which I, I feel like I could really use support. There's times that I'm worried I'm not quite scratching the itch for you, because uh, things have changed around here a lot, and a lot of people did not like, I think, some changes, and uh, we've shrunk. And I'd love to regrow, because those of you that stuck around... Um, I think, of course, you are enjoying the show because you're still here. Find your friends that would enjoy this show and share it with them, please. Let us know. Let them know that we're out here. Uh, that really does encourage me when I see that people are enjoying the show and that we are growing. Uh, because, the, you know, we've, we've, we have went reverse with COVID and with the change in format. Uh, so, <laughs> but those of you who are definitely still Disney fans, make sure you go check out Diz Radio. I do have a fun short segment on there. And Jonathan just does a great job when there's a whole team of us over there at Diz Radio making... Just a fun show, and he's back to doing it weekly. So you get to have some fun with me every week for just a short amount, but you'll have fun with everybody else over there too. But until I hear from you, or free, until you hear from me again, Maya would say, get lost in an adventure!